What's up? I'm Susie and welcome to my channel. <laughs> In today's video, I'm going to show you my favorite apps that I use every day. They've made my life so much easier, so I thought I'd share. So let's get started. Okay, so the first app I want to talk about is the car apps. So starting with the Volvo On Call, if you click that, you can see all this information about your car. You can start it remotely. You can lock or unlock the car doors. You can see the fuel range. Um, you can also see it on a map. Say you're in a parking lot and you can't find your car, you can turn on the lights or you can do the lights and horn. That's probably super helpful. So that's the Volvo app. And then there's also a Mercedes app where you can see the amount of gas that you have in the car. You can lock and unlock the vehicle. You can turn the engine on or off gives you some information about the car, odometer, and all that. I think these car apps are so helpful. If you lose your car keys, you can use this as a backup. If you're in the parking lot and you don't know where your car is, you can find it. So yeah, car apps. That's the first must-have. Next up are shipping apps. I'm gonna start with the USPS mobile one. You can go to click and ship and basically all you do is type in your address, so where you're sending it from, and then you're prompted to type in where it's going to. You can choose priority mail, so if you're using your own box. Once you create your own label, you can print that all out and put it on the box. So not only can you create the shipping label, but here is where it gets good. You can schedule the pickup, free next day pickup. You can plug all that in confirm it. And then there's also other apps that do the same thing, like UPS does it, FedEx also. And last thing about the USPS mobile, if you sign up for informed delivery, you can get an email of all of your paper mail that comes to your mailbox in the morning. So say you get your mail at 2 p.m. At 7.50 a.m. every morning, I get an email of all of the mail that's coming into my mailbox. I think that's helpful. So yeah, sign up for that. And the next app that I use all the time is my banking app. I never really go to the bank anymore since I have my banking app and I can upload images of checks to it and then it gets automatically deposited in usually two days. So that's really convenient, not ever having to go to the bank. And then also another tip is if you put your debit card on Apple Pay, then when you go to the ATM, you can actually use your phone as your debit card and you can pull out cash that way. So next one is the library app. Check with your library to see if they use an app for ebooks or audiobooks. The library I use uses Libby. It's amazing. I can basically get any library book on my phone. So I could search for one, let's say Outliers. I could borrow it right here. So I'll click borrow and then open book using this app. And here it is. I can borrow an audiobook if I wanted to, so I could borrow that as well. I would recommend looking into your library and seeing if they have an app that you can use because the ebook options are pretty endless, which is great. Next up is the parking app. A lot of towns and cities are moving to parking apps instead of parking meters, and there are so many great things with a parking app, as I've learned. In my town, uses Park Mobile. I'm sure there's other ones, so I'll show you what it looks like go into it. When you first download the app, it'll prompt you to enter the make and model of your car and then also put in your license plate. If you have multiple cars, you can put multiple cars in and then you're only doing that one time. So that's just to set it up. And then once you are set up, every time you go and park, all you do is you find the zone you're in. Usually they make that really clear and add the amount of time that you want to park for, whether that's 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, whatever. You can enter all of that in from the app. And the best part about the app is you'll get an email 15 minutes before your time is up. I'll not only be alerted to the fact that my time's running up, but I'll also be able to add time right in the app. So I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to run back to the car. I can just add time right here. The next app I want to talk about is the Translate app, which came with the new update. I actually haven't used it yet, but I feel like it's going to be one of my favorite apps, so let's take a look. Do you know where the train station is? Well, I don't speak Spanish, but that looks right. <laughs> cool. I think this is going to be super helpful. And then favorites, let's see what that does. So I'll save that as a favorite. Nice. Knew I'd like that. <laughs> 
So next up is Apple Wallet. I feel like I couldn't talk about my favorite apps without mentioning Apple Wallet. Most people probably know that you can add your credit card to Apple Wallet and you can use that to pay at grocery stores, coffee shops, restaurants. A ton of places are starting to accept Apple Pay. It's really convenient not having to bring cash everywhere or even your credit card everywhere um, and just bringing your phone. You can also add your debit card to use that at ATMs. And if you live in DC, you can add your Metro card. If you live in New York City, they do have a couple subway stations that allow you to pay with Apple pay. Not all of them, but it is nice that they have at least a few. You can also potentially add your insurance card to Apple Wallet. Some insurance companies give you the option. What you would do is download your insurance's app. So this one, for example, if you sign in and click view ID card, there's usually an option to add to Apple Wallet. So you just click that and it would add to your wallet. I like to add a lot of my cards to Apple Wallet just so I have a backup. And also with iOS 14 that just came out, they're going to be adding car keys. So you might be able to even add your car keys to Apple Wallet. And next up is the Find My app. I think this is a really good one to have enabled. I know I thought I've lost my phone many times, so it's been nice to know that I can reference this if I ever think I lost it. And to make sure this is enabled, you go into settings, and then you would choose your name at the top, and then there's an option for Find My, and then next to Find My iPhone, you'll see either on or off, and you can click that, and then this would be the next screen, and that's how you know if it's enabled. You can also go into the app itself to make sure all the devices are showing on the map, so if you go to the Find My app there, and at the bottom of the screen, you'll see all the devices that you have connected. And once you choose one of the devices, you can choose to either play a sound, mark it as lost, erase the device. And it's not just for iPhone, you can enable it for iPod Touches, Apple Watches, Macs, AirPods. And what happens when you put it in lost mode is it locks it immediately and starts tracking its location. And you can set it to display a message with a contact number on the lock screen so whoever finds it will know your number so they can call you without unlocking the device. Some people also use this app to share their location with friends or family, and then they can also share their location with you. And it doesn't have to be forever. You can set it to an hour, a day, as long as you want. And there is the option to enable notifications if you want to know when someone has left or arrived at a specific location. I haven't particularly used this, but I can see it's probably useful for parents if they want to know where their kids are, like if they've left school or not. So I can see that being useful. Most of the time when I use this app, I know my phone's somewhere in the house. I just can't find it. So I go to a laptop or my desktop, set the ringer, and that's usually what helps me find it. And the last app that I'm going to talk about today is the NJ Transit app. Shout out to New Jersey, the beautiful Garden State. <laughs> I know many times I've seen the train at the train station and still needed to buy my ticket. So luckily I've been able to use the app in those situations. So I'll go to NJ Transit. So instead of stopping at the ticket machine, you can open the New Jersey Transit app and go to buy tickets and then select the origin. So I'll say Penn Station and then select the destination. Let's say I'm going to Newark Airport and then you can click one way adult. You can also choose round trip adult or monthly and then proceed to checkout and you can make the payment right there. All right, that was it. Those are my favorite apps. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button if you learned something. Um, and then also comment below a star emoji so I know who the real ones are, who made it to the end. And then also make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss a video.